Time for game one of four on Elimination Saturday. Our starting lineups presented by Capital One for the visiting team in this game, the Oklahoma Sooners. The National Freshman of the Year, National Player of the Year, Jennings and Otto at the top. A little bit of a shuffling after that for Patty Gasso. Jada Coleman dropped to sixth in the lineup. And Mackenzie Donahue makes a start after coming off the bench on Thursday. A lot of crimson and cream in the stands. The Sooners faithful, hoping their team can stay alive. And they'll try to do so against Georgia's ace, Mary Wilson Avant. Yeah, Mary Wilson Avant has the biggest wins of the season for Georgia throughout the season. Beat Florida a few times, of course, beat Oklahoma, like we mentioned before. 2.72 ERA in the season, but when she's throwing her best, ERA should be around a one or sub one. You ready? Let's do it. Four games today. Four teams are going to go home. Four teams will be alive for Sunday. We know two of them are James Madison, unseated. And Alabama, the number three team in the country after Montana Fouts birthday perfect game yesterday. Tiara Jennings, the national freshman of the year, leads it off against Avan. Birthday girl. Jennings. Well, we'll see if she can match Montana in some way. I don't think she's going to throw a perfect game, but she can make history. Tiara Jennings, just three RBIs away from tying the all-time Division I freshman record. She's got 87. Jenny Topping of the 2000 Washington Huskies had 90. Second leading home run hitter in the country, Jennings. Only behind her teammate who's on deck. And a ground ball over Avant. Two short stop. Ellie Armistead throws out Jennings to kick off the game. Ellie Armistead playing more up the middle of the field, and that's exactly where Jennings hit it. Good defensive positioning there by the Georgia defense. They're having some pretty big shifts already early in this game on the left side. Georgia defense that has been a flaw this year. 70 errors, only a 956 fielding percentage. By and large, though, much better in the postseason. And young infield has grown. Strike to Jocelyn Otto. National Player of the Year beating out Rachel Garcia and Gabby Plain. It's one for two, two walks on Thursday. Ball. You can see how far back that Sydney Chambly is playing, just heels against the warning track, back against the fence out there. A lot of respect for how much power this Oklahoma offense has. Any further back for Chambly, you'd be adding one to the attendance figure today. <laughs> Maybe she wants to take a ride on the rail cam out there. I don't know. And who wouldn't? <laughs> 2 1. And Otto rips this one foul. Wide of her coach, Patty Gasso. 2 and 2. 27th year for Patty Gasso. She said after the loss Thursday, there were a few people whose faces changed in the dugout today. Faces that we really need in this lineup. Getting the chance to see how her team responds to some major adversity. A ground ball to second from Otto. And a wide throw by Kuma, reeled in by Lacey Fincher. Sydney Kuma to Fincher, 4-3. Well, what they're going to face against Mary Wilson Avant is her ability to go up in the zone with her rise ball, and she can also go south in the zone with a drop ball. Those two pitches complement each other so well, but what sets both of them up is the changeup, the pitch that she can throw in any count at 53, 52 miles an hour. That's going to be an important pitch for her today. Has thrown nearly every inning in the postseason for Georgia, 34 out of 40 coming in. Pitched in every game in the postseason for Georgia. And a strike over to Kinsey Hansen. And I will say too, Kevin, those three pitches that you saw drop, rise, and change up are not the only pitches that you'll see, but they help set up her screwball and her curveball that she'll also work in there to these hitters. Ball. 
Told us she'd really been working a lot on her changeup these past few games. Avant thought her drop ball was particularly strong against Florida. Fifth year senior, doesn't want this to be the final day of her career. Graduate student out of Macon, Georgia. What a 1 1 to Hanson. What a 2. Second team All American, Kinsey Hansen. With the All American Lions waiting on deck. A lineup peppered with awards. Popped up into foul territory. And Fincher is tall, but not that tall. It's a one-two pitch, and Mary Wilson Avant goes to her curveball. And on a one-two count, look how close this pitch is to the zone. It's a mistake. It's more over the middle of the plate. Surprised that Kinsey Hansen just didn't barrel up that mistake. Hansen is a hitter who's barreled up quite a few mistakes this year. 21 home runs, tied for seventh in the country, coming into the World Series. No hitter in their lineup batting below 300 with several batting above 400. Half the lineup has an average above 400. An offense a lot of folks have talked about all year. Maybe the best in Division I history, but a slow start to the tournament. Just three runs in nine innings as Jada Kearney tracks down the fly ball. It'll be G. Juarez into the circle for Oklahoma when we return. Another brilliant crowd here in Oklahoma City, even well before noon local time. Oklahoma and Georgia and the Bulldogs starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Pretty balanced Georgia lineup. Only one lefty. It's Sidney Chambly, a lot of pop. Bulldogs have hit 11 home runs in the NCAA tournament, and two have come from Jaden Fields, who has surged late in the year. Fincher, Mosley, Chambly, big power bats in the middle of the lineup. Jaden Fields is here, and so is her brother. Pretty good athlete in his own right. The new Bears quarterback, Justin Fields, who is repping the city of Chicago with his Blackhawks cap. So here is the opposition for this Georgia lineup. First time we see G. Juarez in the postseason, Amanda, since the middle of the regionals. Yeah, it's been a while, but she is an experienced veteran postseason pitcher. And a bunt laid down by Savannah Sykes. And one pitch, one out for Juarez. So Sykes tried to beat the left-handed throwing Juarez and could not do so. The strikeout to walk number is phenomenal for the former Arizona State Sun Devil. Yeah, just when she's gotten in trouble, she's a tendency to give up a few home runs. Transferred from Arizona State, All-American there and can put up All-American type numbers. A slightly inflated ERA, but she's a type of pitcher, Kevin, that can be a shutdown pitcher, throw shutouts, and pile up strikeouts fast. First game in two weeks for Juarez. As Sidney Kuma grounds one foul, 0-2. Sidney Kuma, the only Georgia player to start now all 57 games this year. Leads the Bulldogs in hits, runs, RBIs. Tied for the lead with 15 home runs. And a breakout year in Athens, GA. When these teams met in the regular season, Kuma had a walk and a home run in her two trips to the plate against Juarez. You know, Wara is just a, a pitcher who's extremely comfortable throwing on this field. A lot of experience playing right here in the stadium, of course, 
didn't have the upper decks last time that she stood in that circle, but a lot of experience here at the Women's College World Series. Her ninth start, her third trip with two different teams. Three and two now for Akuma. Georgia team that went 34 and 22 coming into the game, just seven and 17 in the SEC, finished 11th place, but here they are. Kumar goes down swinging, up and in 68 for G. Juarez, and a strikeout her first. Yeah, that's gonna be a big pitch for her as it is for most lefties. They like to rely on that curveball. She'll be able to work it on both sides of the plate. It's one of the pitches she likes to go to, and she'll also be able to mix a rise ball up in the zone and her changeup to complement that curveball that she can throw in any count on any side of the plate. Two down for Lacey Fincher. Best bat in the Georgia lineup. The Tanner Williams, Alabama native, Lacey Fincher. Leads the team in average on base and slugging. 42 walks and tied with Kuma with those 15 homers. One and one. One of the more experienced players on this team and is a starting lineup that only features one senior, and that's Mary Wilson Avant, the starting pitcher. Fincher, a junior, 143rd career start. I got a chance to talk to her earlier this season, and she is one of the more veteran players in a very young Georgia lineup with a lot of freshmen or second-year freshmen because of the COVID, se because of the COVID season. What do you say to them? She said, I just tell them, remember, you're here for a reason. Don't ever forget it. Off speed strike for Juarez, two and two to Fincher. And it is going to be another loud afternoon and morning for the folks here at OKC. Going to feel like a road game for the Bulldogs. A task that James Madison did ace on Thursday. On 2-2, Fincher serves one into left field, and that drops in front of Donahue. A two-out single for Lacey Fincher. Bit of an off-speed pitch. It got up and down her hands, even jammed her a little bit, even though it was off-speed, but she's just able to continue to still swing hard and find a hole out there in front of left field. Eighth hit of the NCAAs for Fincher. And now Sarah Mosley. In that Georgia win over Oklahoma this year, Mosley tied the game in the bottom of the seven. Two out RBI single to force extras where the Bulldogs would win it. And there was a second game that day. Georgia did win 7-6, but Oklahoma responded from the loss quite well. They led 12-0 after three against Lou Harris Champers Bunch. Ended up winning the game 12-3 in five innings. So if you wanna know how Oklahoma responds to adversity, the answer this year has been very well. Check out this Lacey Fincher single and how it Actually hits off of her bat twice. It's jammed on the hands and then hits it off the end of the bat. Don't see that too often. The rare double single. <laughs> a pitch so nice she hit it twice. Mosley goes down on a one-two. And two K's for G. And the bottom of the first. She's capable of being a strikeout pitcher, the veteran, the All-American, a low rise ball to be able to get Sarah Mosley, Oklahoma, and the number one offense in the country coming up to bat. Oklahoma's 33-0 record in peril. And a run scores to tie it up for Georgia. 
Georgia walks it off. The Sooners are unbeaten no more. That's the way Oklahoma's 33-0 start to the year ended. That's the way their 40-game win streak dating back to last year ended. That loss to Georgia April 20th. And for more on the Sooners, let's check in with Jalen Johnson. Thanks, guys. Oklahoma has not lost many games this year, but when they have bounced back with that big offense after that Georgia game, like you guys were talking about, run ruled them the next day after they lost to Oklahoma State earlier in the year, came back and win the series. So you don't get to be the number one team in the nation by being scared or not having grit to go out and do it again. But on the other side of this field, a Georgia team that's confident because they know they have the ability to do it because they've done it before. So no nerves from what any of them told me today. You would think that would be the case, Jalen. And this is a young Georgia team, but it is a Georgia team that has grown and leaned on its youth and brand of fearlessness down the stretch. And we talked to some of the Georgia players earlier in the week. And they had the feeling that they had beaten Oklahoma, so even during the losing streak at the end of the year, they didn't panic. It's just been a season for Georgia that has had its ups, like beating Oklahoma, and then it's had its downs, too, like a seven-game win streak rolling in the NCAA tournament. And losing several games before that as well. So big difference maker for them was after the SEC tournament, they finally had an extended time to practice, put in more days. And both it helped them offensively and defensively, too. Their pitchers got to put in more work in the bullpen with Rachel Fico. Their defense got to take some more ground balls and situational work with Tony Baldwin. Mary Wilson Avant throw to Grace Lyons on 2-1. 2-2. Two I, two. I, I think I think you forget about that the fact that when you're in the middle of the season, you're constantly playing, especially in February and March. I think not a lot of people know this. We're playing a lot of tournaments. So you'll play five games in three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's not at least series, three-game series until the end of March, beginning of April for some conferences. Here are the numbers during that seven game losing streak. Just five home runs hit 180. And then practice, if it doesn't make perfect, it certainly makes better. 11 home runs and the six games in the NCAA tournament. Well, you have to have good fortune in the postseason, and Georgia had that. They were able to host a regional as an unseeded team against Duke because Duke had not been pre-selected as a host site and the host sites were pre-selected this year due to COVID protocols but they won it anyway. Went on the road beat Florida here in Oklahoma City and a strikeout for a band of Lions as we check in once again with Jalen. At the beginning of the postseason, Georgia started wearing little Oklahoma charms on all of their cleats. Britton Rogers' mom actually handed them out to all of the team, and they just put them on there to remind themselves where they wanted to be at this point in the season, and maybe the charms worked because they are in OKC. Well, Jalen, uh, it's a wonderful story, and it's even more wonderful after last night because Britton Rogers' mom is Courtney Blades who was the last pitcher to throw a perfect game at the World Series before Montana Fouts did so yesterday. So I'd say anything that Courtney Blades gives you, Oklahoma charm or not, <laughs> go ahead and wear it. She's got the good mojo. A cool part about that, too, is that Courtney Blades played at Southern Miss, and their head coach was Lou Harris Champer, who's the head coach for Georgia. So many incredible layers that we've just been peeling back here at the World Series. Mother and daughter both playing for the legendary Coach Lou. Lindsey Elam down swinging three straight strikes from Avan and back-to-back -back K's here in the second. Avant doing what she does best, being able to go up in the zone with her first strikeout and then stay more down the zone with the second. Curveball, late break. Spin, a curveball spin where she just works it across the plate. It's beautiful. Whew. And a strike now to Jada Coleman. And I think it really would have been easy for a team to give up or just not believe as much when 
you've lost seven games in a row in the most important time of your season. But when we talked to Lou Harris Champer, she talked about this team just continued to believe. And Jane Fields told us, she told them every day, y'all, this team is special. I know, I know we've lost five games in a row. I know we've lost seven games in a row, but this team is special. Don't quit believing in each other and don't give up. Raban trying for a special second inning. Jada Coleman into left field and a base hit for Coleman. A great response from Coleman, who's dropped to sixth in the lineup. Had an ugly swing at that second strike and then responds by shooting a line drive the other way. The first hit at the Women's College World Series for her in her young career. Player who was just thrilled to be here, super emotional to put on that Oklahoma uniform and a freshman was one of the top three finalists for National Freshman of the Year. Her first hit, I dare say there will be many more to come on this field for Jada Coleman. Mackenzie Donahue now to take strike one. The one change in the starting lineup in terms of the hitters. Donahue in, Taylor Snow out today. And Donahue, a player who's only started now 25 of Oklahoma's 54 games, despite hitting 429 with a 524 on base percentage and six home runs. You just stumble into greatness everywhere in this team. Runner is off and Donahue fouls it away, one and two. And we asked Patty Gasso, why do you uh, fill out your lineups the way you do. What do you prioritize? She said she prioritizes matchups and feels like this is the most she's ever been able to do that on a team. Really, you could put all the names in a hat. You still got to come with something good. There's so much depth on this team. <laughs> she knew it in the fall, too. It was just raving about her offense whenever there were some fall reports and d1softball.com I mean she was on this offense right from the beginning saying that they were just going to be something special with what the freshman class the recruits coming in added and Patty we trust all the alumni wearing those shirts Well, here's the Oklahoma offense this season, and the numbers are just silly, absolutely silly. First in the country in basically everything, 11 home runs off the all-time record set by Hawaii in 2010. But they're going to have to win four games in two days to make it to the championship series. On a 1-2, Donahue fouls one into the brand new upper deck. Yeah, today is the day, Kevin, it's tough. It's an elimination game. So in our first two games, and every game today, there's going to be a team that's sent home. So quickly we go from eight teams who are just happy to be here, pumped to be playing in the Women's College World Series, to four teams tomorrow. Six of the eight teams are going to be eliminated within two days. Happens very quickly. <laughs> Donahue with a high fly ball. Chambly back at the wall. And good! The one new player in the starting lineup for Patty Gasso just went deep. A two-run home run for Donahue, and it is Oklahoma on the board first on Elimination Saturday. Avant goes up in the zone with her rise ball, but Donahue is expecting it. A one-two count, and that rise ball just not up enough. Able to get her barrel to it, and that ball just continued to travel and travel. And how quickly did this inning change? Two quick strikeouts that looked like Avant was rolling, and then a home run after a single. You know, it's almost as if Patty Gasso knows what she's doing, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe sometimes yeah. she knows. You win 1,330 <laughs> games, you stumble into one every now and then. Inserts Donahue into the lineup. That's home run number 148. And it came also 
on a one-two count after Donahue had fouled off three two-strike pitches. Jana Johns takes strike one. Well, and I, I kind of feel like every Sooner fan, alumni in the dugout, Coach Gass, their staff, they're probably just sign a little bit of relief because their no offense doubt. hasn't looked good. And even in this game, they just looked a little unsure of themselves. So Donahue being able to step up as a sophomore and try to change the tide. Whew. There's a world, and we're a long way away from that, but there is a world where that home run on a two-strike, two-out pitch down in the count after all those foul balls ends up being one of those turning point moments for Oklahoma if they are going to come through the loser's bracket and make their way to Sunday. By the way, the winner of this game, I'm not going to get easier tonight because UCLA is waiting. The cross brackets, UCLA, the number two overall seed, seven Eastern, six Central tonight, will face the winner of this game, which will need to play two today. UCLA only needing to play once. A 3-2 pitch grounded to third by Johns, and she is thrown out by Savannah Sykes. But a two-out rally compels two for the Sooners from Mackenzie Donahue. The player with the least amount of home runs in the starting lineup for Oklahoma is the one who gets him on the board first. After a freshman, Jada Coleman finds a way to get on a two-run shot for Donahue. Perfect game in 21 years, as you heard Beth Moen say at the World Series. Extraordinary stuff for Montana Fouts, who sends Alabama to the semis. James Madison on the other side of the bracket there. Both those teams one win away from the championship series. It was one of the most dominant performances I can think of, Amanda. And, and frankly, I'll go across sports. Baseball, softball, pitching performances, period. I haven't seen many ever like Montana last night. Just continuing to pick up where she left off on Thursday when she had 16 strikeouts against Arizona. It's so good, just throwing the ball so hard. Late break, looks good. I mean, we were talking about this before the game, the day or after the game last night. But Jenny Finch was in the stands for Alabama, Arizona a couple of nights ago watching Montana. That's Jenny Finch out in the circle right now. One of the all-time strikeout leaders in Alabama's single season history has a chance to break the record the way she's going. And her Crimson Tide are one win away from the championship series. Yeah, 30 strikeouts in two games against the teams that have the most national championships in our sport. Jada Kearney swings through strike three and a good start for Juarez after her offense put up a two spot. Yeah, and a third strikeout for the day on three different pitches. Off-speed pitch, just one hops or catcher. Elam keeps it in front. Now the lone lefty in the lineup. That is Sidney Chambly. This one put in play, but right to Jennings at second. Tomorrow night, Sunday night baseball. The Red Sox and Yankees wrap up their first series of the season. 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Coverage begins an hour earlier on ESPN with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Sox were 5-2 winners yesterday in what is a very competitive American League East race. Of course, the big news in the American League East is the Orioles have won three in a row. You can't stop the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. <laughs> but can they win four in a row? We'll find out today. <laughs> Jaden Fields has had such a brilliant tournament. And 
and chases strike one. Fields went three for five in that game one win against Oklahoma in April, including a triple which left the yard. Very odd play. Fields actually hit a home run in the game. Didn't touch home plate. And it was ruled a triple as she was called out as big brother Justin watches on from the Georgia cheering section. Amazing thing about that game after Jaden Fields missed home plate was called out. She picked up the winning hit in the ninth inning. She walked it off. Some poetic justice for Jaden Fields. Who grew up wanting to play for Georgia pretty much her whole life. That ball's cracked but foul down the right field line. Yeah, associate head coach Tony Baldwin told us that the time during the pandemic, that off time was a game changer for her. She just started to put in the work, oftentimes working out with her brother, committed to getting stronger, healthier, being able to put in the work on defense too. And it was really her defensive change that found her a spot in the starting lineup. 31st start of the year in right field tonight. That's a fly ball to the gap in right center from field. It's the hang up for Nicole Mendes though. And there's a shutdown second inning for G. Juarez. Two nothing Sooners at the end of two in game one. UCLA tonight the loser season is over this is a graphic that just knocked us for a loop this morning since the start of the World Series in 2019 teams to score first are 21 and 0 and we have not seen a single lead change in the last two World Series it seems impossible <laughs> we've seen a bunch of ties but no lead changes so if you're a Georgia fan you're hoping that that's a graphic jinx coming. If you're an Oklahoma fan, you like the sound of that. I feel some lead changes coming today. Has to be Has at to some be. point. I we just feel it. Four elimination games. <laughs> Arizona, Florida State to follow us. UCLA against the winner of this game, and then Oklahoma State against the winner of that game you see under the scorebook. A lot of speculation about Mike Candrea, whether this is his final season in Arizona or not? Two amazing senior classes we're going to see in that game. It's going to be an emotional game. Hard to send one of those teams home. Florida State, the World Series winning class in 2018, and an Arizona class that Mike Candrea has referred to as the gold standard. That game coming up after ours. Scheduled for 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 local. A pop-up from Nicole Mendes for the first out of the third. Here's Tiare Jennings, who supplied all three RBIs with one swing Thursday. Yeah, against Odyssey Alexander, the All-American for JMU on the first pitch of the get back. She came up with two on and just sent it out of here. It looked like Oklahoma was going to come roaring back. They tied it. No lead change. Back to her prior conversation. JMU ended up winning on a Kate Gordon home run. I mean, what would have been the odds that after the three-round home run, there would not be a lead change in that game, the way Oklahoma swings it? But Odyssey Alexander shut the Sooners down, and we hope Odyssey is enjoying a nice long soak in an ice bath today. Well-deserved day off for JMU. Jennings, an inside-out swing and a line drive to right. That's an 11-game hit streak for T.R.A. Jennings. Well, she's a player, Kevin, who got National Freshman of the Year, but 
easily could have been a top three finalist or the winner of National Player of the Year with the way that she showed up her freshman year. It was an inside out swing pitch on the inside corner, but she lets it gets deep. Is able to square it up. Now runner on for Jocelyn Otto. Oh. 30 home runs this season for Otto. Three have come in the NCAA tournament. 11 home runs career in the postseason in 27 games. If there is another home run for Otto, under the tutelage of JT Gasso, she would stand alone atop the Oklahoma single season leaderboard. She's currently tied with herself and Lauren Chamberlain. That ball is absolutely sizzled to short, and it's going to be one only. Jennings will go to second as the throw got away from Fincher. The catch made by Armistead at shortstop, but Georgia misses the chance to turn two. Allo clearly sitting back and looking for a changeup in her at bat. The way that she hammers this 55 mile an hour changeup, and this absolutely should have been a double play. Fincher has to pick that ball at first base. It's not an easy play, but you got to get your glove down and get it. That will go as an error against Armistead, her 12th. The four starting infielders have combined for Georgia this year now for 47 errors on the year. Oklahoma as a team has committed 19. Two down for Hanson and a foul ball strike. Defensive positioning here for Georgia. Look at where Ellie Armistead is playing, right toward the middle of the field. She's been positioned there, and that's why she was able to get that allo line drive. Continues to put herself right back up the middle of the field, and it's worked out a couple of times already in this game. I'm so glad we finally got to the telestrator here on Elimination Saturday. Feels good. Feels good. <laughs> You're wondering, Amanda is literally stretching after using the telestrator for the first time. It's like two feet out of your position. <laughs> Gotta yeah, keep the arm loose. Bad, like Odyssey. Yeah. yeah, I think you've done just about as much work <laughs> as her. That's on the ground to third base. And the throw made by Sykes. She had a crossing runner Jennings in her sight. But Georgia works around the air in what remains a 2-0 game. The Arizona Wildcats not ready to go home. The 11th seed of the country against the 10th seed Florida State. Arizona with its eight national championships, second most in history. Florida State, the 2018 national title winners. They will meet. One team will move on to face Oklahoma State in our nightcap. One team season will be over. It's an emotional day today after the first two days of the World Series and all the joy and elation, four teams are going to pack up in their seasons and in a lot of cases their careers and for a lot of these players careers that have been elongated thanks to the NCAA granting an extra year of eligibility after the COVID shutdown. Juarez burning Bordeaux and it is Juarez in her fifth year between Arizona State and Oklahoma not wanting her career to end today. 57 starts in three years with the Sooners after two years at ASU. And a strike to start Peyton Bordeaux in two. So a lot of fifth-year pitchers actually in the World Series this year. Rachel Garcia, Shannon Sale, G. Juarez's his teammate, Kaylin Arnold, Odyssey Alexander, Alyssa Denna, Morat Lopez for Arizona. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Bordeaux could not hold up. And another strikeout for Juarez, that's four. 
And G. Juarez has all three of her pitches working so far in this game for strikeout pitches. One on her curveball inside to a right-handed hitter. She can throw that pitch on both sides. And then a rise ball. I love the location of this pitch. Still got the break up. It's a little bit lower in the zone. Got the hitter to swing underneath it. And then the change up that just dropped in there. It's a little bit more of an off-speed pitch there too at 60 miles an hour. But it was the location of that last change up with two strikes that she got a hitter to be out in front. She bounced it in for a swing and strike out. Patty Gasso told us she felt like this was the best that G has been feeling all year these past couple of weeks, oh. even though we haven't seen her in a game in two weeks. And really, Patty credits Nicole May, the freshman, and the work she's done in the circle, and felt like that's elevated Shannon Sale and G Juarez's games. A friendly competition from within, a first-year freshman and a couple of fifth-year seniors. Yeah, we haven't seen her yet. But Shannon Sale, the other pitchers on this staff is a senior. Credit Nicole May saying that she was the missing link for us. Two one for Ellie Armistead. And a little blooper to short. Grace Lyons is there. The Women's College World Series Championship Finals begin Monday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on ESPN. The World Series is at 100% capacity, so you can still get some tickets. Go to NCAA.com slash WCWS, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's a ground ball foul from Savannah Sykes. So first time through the order, Juarez almost perfect. Just a single from Fincher on a ball that hit the bat twice before plopping in left field. Other than that, no base runners, four strikeouts. Well, it'll be interesting to see the adjustments that Georgia makes off of G. Juarez's second time through the lineup, in fact. Keeping Shannon Sell warmed up in the bullpen currently right now, just in case they need to go to her and have three reliable arms that they can go to with Shane and Sale and Nicole May also. It is the big advantage that Oklahoma has needing to win four games in two days. It's almost impossible to do that just with one reliable arm, but the rested team after the day off yesterday to get to the championship series. We're going to need to see Juarez, Sale, and May, all three. And Juarez is looking great. This is as good as we've seen G. Juarez in weeks, maybe longer. Three innings of five strikeout shutout ball. Going right back to that rise ball, it's usually the best strikeout pitch that she has. And if she's going to get these Georgia hitters to expand their zone this much, she might hit double digits. Two-nothing lead for Oklahoma over Georgia through three. The Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. And let's check in down on the field with Jalen. Coach Lou, saw you having a conversation with Ellie Armas said she came off the field there. What was that conversation? Oh, I was just telling her what a great job she did on her read uh, on the inning before just to keep doing what she does out there on defense. She's so special, such a fun player to watch play defense. You guys are facing a team that you faced earlier in non-conference. What does the preparation look like when you're going up against a team that you've seen earlier in the year? Yeah, you know, we got to just continue to trust the plan. You know, again, uh, just zone down, look for balls that we can get our barrel on. Uh, I'm proud of Mary for keeping us close, and we just got to keep fighting, duking it out, and, and get for wait for our pitch to come to us. Any adjustments you see that you need to make? Uh, we need to zone down, for sure, and, and we're working on that. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Fifth trip to the World Series for Lou Harris Champer with Georgia, and a 19th consecutive NCAA tournament. You know, Kevin, Mary Wilson Avant has given up five runs in the Women's College World Series. Four of those runs have been off of two, two run home runs on one, two counts on pitches that were up in the zone, not high up enough, and mistakes that hitters have taken advantage of. Cheyenne Factor for Oklahoma State hitting that other one off of her. Donahue today, and neither of those two are particularly 
huge sluggers, both good hitters, but not the players you'd expect to hit the home runs against Dave Ann. I love the mirror images, though. That was really cool to see how similar those swings were. And you can tell, too, just you, you can't leave a pitch over the middle of the plate in a one and two count, especially at this level, Women's College World Series, and expect to get away with it. Factor and Donahue making her pay. Both on one, two counts. Did you say that already? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> a pop-up from Grace Lyons, and that is caught in foul ground by Kuma. Four, five, six for Oklahoma in the fourth, and the number four hitter pops out to start. Now that is a catcher number 22, Lindsey Elam. Second straight start behind the plate for Lindsey Elam here in the World Series. Second year captain. Normally it's Kinsey Hansen who catches. This is only Elam's 20th start at catcher this year, but Patty Gasso is happy to have her bat in the lineup. You look at what she's done in the NCAA tournament. Two doubles, three homers, five of her seven hits for extra bases. Second year captain Lindsey Elam has been a little bit in and out of the lineup. Patty Gasso said, I could not ask for a better role model or a better example on how to handle adversity. Player who barely played as a freshman has worked her way into a full time starter or a part time starter the last two years. Two and two. I had these shirts made. There's Allie Clifton and Paige Parker. A ton of the alumni here, 15 plus alumni here. Shay Knighton in attendance, Amber Flores, Katie Norris, Katie Self, Sid Romero, of course, who's coaching first base right now, but had those shirts made within hours after losing to JMU. Here to support their team in an elimination game and an elimination day. No, the Sooners are going to have the locals behind their backs as long as they're in this thing. Our own Aaron Miller doing radio for Oklahoma right next door to us as well. Two-time World Series champ. And there is an emotional lift that we've seen Oklahoma get time and again. They won a championship a few years ago as the 10 seed. The number one seed here. And it always feels like a home game with OU and OKC as Elam reaches on a ground ball that Kuma couldn't collect. It's a good at bat there by Lindsey Elam to foul off several pitches. Alumni loving it, just high-fiving it up, just trying to find it, be a spark for this Oklahoma offense. Sydney Kuma was coming toward the middle of the field and opened up a hole in the right side. She lays out for it, but unable to glove it. Will go as a base hit for Elam. Back up to 500 for the tournament. Oklahoma's fourth hit today. Jada Coleman with one on, one out. And a pitch that really missed out of the hand. Bordeaux able to keep it in front. Oklahoma doing a good job of making Mary Wilson Avant work. 65 pitches, and we're still in the top of the fourth inning with just an now. Pretty 
pretty efficient day for Avan Thursday. Only 92 pitches. Six innings in Georgia's 3-2 loss to Oklahoma State. Coleman to third base. Snared by Sykes, who gets one at second. Savannah Sykes with a really good play and a throw across the way for the second out. Yes, yeah, Savannah Sykes playing up the line over at third base, understanding that Coleman is going to be able to bunt, potentially in a bunt situation, use her wheels, or also slap. She drives it right into the ground, and Savannah Sykes is just right there to be able to get that force out at two quickly. And with Coleman's speed, even though that was a bang-bang play, they were unable to turn two. Your telestrator arm a little bit fresher now? Yeah, I iced it in between innings. Great work. <laughs> There's a strike to the home run hitter from earlier, Mackenzie Donahue. Physically, she stands out a little bit because she's only 5'3", and Patty Gasso refers to Donahue as her little mighty might in a team of giants. <laughs> Told us that she's not always in the lineup, but when she gets in, and I quote Patty Gasso, she shoves it right up my nose. <laughs> These are home run, two run shot, a rise ball, one and two count, just didn't get up enough, and Donahue had a good at bat, fouled off several pitches with two strikes. Finally got to that one. Came on the seventh pitch of that at bat, and in a two strike count here, she takes ball one. This was not an Oklahoma offense that came preordained for greatness. Donahue a season ago, just eight for 55, 2.30 on base, no home runs. This one is yanked through the left side. An aggressive send from Coleman to go to third. Donahue to second. Coleman's going to come home on a ground ball throw from left, and she scores. Jada Coleman comes all the way home from first, and it's 3-0 Oklahoma. Look at Coleman and Donahue just carrying the team in this game. Coleman has some speed. We talked about it before. That's why Georgia was unable to turn that double play. And Donahue continues to battle with two strikes. Gets a pitch low in the zone and hits it hard on the ground through the 5-6 hole. And Coleman, because she was running on the pitch, is able to go first and third. She sees it right away, uses her eyes, picks it up, and Patty Gasso says, go right here. But trust her instincts that whenever she saw the ball get away, she knew she could score because she had the speed to do so. It is a single and an E7. The eighth error of the season against Chambly in left, who appeared to just spike the throw into the dirt. I don't know if Chambly changed her mind as to where to throw the ball midstream, but she just lost the handle. There was no communication on the Georgia infield because I think they were taking so such a surprise the fact that Jada Coleman was going first to third on a ball that was into left field. You just don't see that too often, and the communication went away for this young team, just not talking to each other. Two and zero for Janet Johns. And that one hit her. Johns hit by a pitch for the 17th time this year. And it's two on, two out for the Sooners. Yeah, when Sydney Chamley picked up the ball in left field, I think she was just unsure of where to go. Am I supposed to go to third? Am I supposed to throw to second? For Donahue, like, where do you want me to throw the ball? Just didn't trust yourself. And put pressure on her. And look who's the first one out of the dugout to fire up the crimson and cream crowd. Jada Coleman is absolutely electrifying, and we asked Patty Gasso about her. And Patty said, look, either she's your favorite player or you don't like her. If you're on the other team, this girl's going to drive you nuts. But she has such a passion and pure joy and love for the game and that comes through when you talk to Jada, as we did on Tuesday, and it comes through every time you watch her play. Jalen? 
I know Jada trusts her speed and trusts herself, but you could see when Mackenzie was running the second base, she kind of gave her a little signal like, girl, go, go, go. You have the speed, you can beat this, and that's what got her home. There's such a love between Jada and her teammates too, Jalen. So infectious, even from up here to see. Ooh. Freshman who was a left-handed shortstop in high school has been an electric center fielder here, and after a fielder's choice, she gets on first, and her speed leads to an error that leads to another run. Now to Cole Mendes, ball and a strike to the nine hitter. Just a player too, when we talked to her, just couldn't even believe that she was here. Has been wanting to get here since she was 12 years old and then committed to Oklahoma for a really long time, five years before getting a chance to put on that uniform. Now to fifth year senior Mendes. Lays down a bunt, strike two. Everybody clap your hands. When we say Jada Coleman was a left-handed shortstop, this is not like a scrimmage here and there. For real, she played shortstop in high school. Texas Gatorade Player of the Year. National Gatorade Player of the Year coming out of high school. And Patty Gasso said, when I heard she was a left-handed shortstop, I'm thinking she must be the coach's daughter. But she said she'd be a good shortstop in college. She's just a better center fielder. I played with a left-handed second baseman that got Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year stud, but I don't, haven't seen a left-handed shortstop in Coleman. Who was your left-handed second baseman? Natalie Villarreal. Natalie Villarreal. Well, I'm sure Jada would love to get Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year at shortstop. She did play a little bit there this year. She said she has a pact with Patty Gasso that she'll get to play there again at some point in her career, but Patty said, look, for now, I believe you, but we're going to do what's right for your team. And what's right for your team is putting you in center field where you can suck up every fly ball within a two-mile radius. She only has the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Grace Lyons, in front of her at shortstop, so tough to break in there. It's a good point. 3-2 now for Mendes. Another long at bat as Oklahoma drives the pitch count of Avan up. Runners will get a boost. Donahue from second. Johns off of first. Seventh pitch of the at bat into left field and Chambly is well positioned. Another run across for Oklahoma and a 3-0 lead for Patty Gasso's crew. We'll hear from the Sooner head coach next. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. I'm here with Oklahoma coach Patty Gasco. Coach, you inserted McKenzie into the lineup for the first time today and it seems to be paying off so far. What went behind that decision? Um, just she likes big moments and this is a good matchup for her offensively. Um, putting the runner in motion gives her, even with two strikes, gives her freedom to swing and that's one thing I'm feeling that we're just not feeling the freedom to jump on things. I think we're looking for something a little too much. So uh, kind of freed her up and worked out for us. What's the big difference you're seeing in your offense between today and when you guys play JMU? Uh, a little more aggressive today. Working counts a little bit better. Um, hard hit balls. I mean, that last one was a hard hit ball. Jossie just smoked one earlier. So I feel like a little more aggressiveness that we're seeing today. Thank you, Coach. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Patty Gasso, Oklahoma head coach, whose team has won the World Series four times. It's going to be hard to do it again, but it is doable. It's happened five times that a team has lost day one, made the champ series. Three of those teams have won it. And the most recent, of course, Florida State, just two postseasons ago. Lost game one, and then rampaged through the rest of the World Series, winning six in a row, including a sweep of Washington in the championship series. Sydney Kuma, the batter here in the fourth. And one and one from G. Juarez. And look, if there's any team that's going to come out of the loser's bracket and win it, Oklahoma seems like the most likely bet. Yeah, especially if G. Juarez is pitching like this. Seems like she's feeling good, feeling fresh. Remember how she hadn't pitched since, regional, since regionals? Seven in a row retired for Juarez. And she misses to Kuma.
Super Regionals, it was Nicole May, complete game. Game one against Washington, Chad and Sale, complete game. And game two, no need for Juarez there. Struggled a little bit in the Regionals against Wichita State. But again, this is a daunting schedule, and it's a schedule that Patty Gasso and a lot of other coaches have talked about uh, that they think is long overdue for change to have to play four games in two days if you're in the loser's bracket. Patty has talked to us about how she still feels bad about having to ride Paige Parker so much in the World Series in the past. It is very condensed if you lose game one. That's why it's so important to start out 2-0 like JMU and Alabama. It just, you have to day off, and then you enter Sunday with a zero in the loss column, and a team going up against a team that has a one, and you for sure in the advantage because you're rested, and your back's not against the wall like there. Strike three, number six for Juarez. Another strikeout pitch on a different pitch, a backdoor curveball, so an outside curveball to a right-handed hitter. We've seen one inside on the other side of the plate. And just G. Juarez working at all of her pitches right now, having Georgia and Fitch trying to figure her out. Both those strikeouts to Kuma on curveballs. Both at different spots, as you mentioned, and now ball one to Fincher after strikeout number six out of ten total outs. Lacey Fincher, the only Georgia Bulldog to reach base. Okay. How would you adjust to Juarez second time through if you were Georgia? Have to lay off the changeup, and you have to see the ball down. Whew. Then after that, you have to pick a side of the plate, find that curve ball to be able to Get a barrel too, because if you change or if you chase her rise ball, she has you right where she wants you. If you chase her change up in the dirt, she has you right where she wants you. To show discipline on those two pitches. Fincher golfs one to left field. That is a fair ball right off the chalk. And a double for Lacey Fincher, who has both of George's hits. is able to stay in her legs. Look at how she stays so much in her legs. Her back knee hits the ground, and that ball was just barely fair. It hits the chalk line. Don't think that Donna, who thought that it was going to be fair, she's hesitated for a second, but either way, Fincher was going to get in there for a double. Now 9 for 20 in the NCAAs. Two doubles, two homers. And Sarah Mosley takes the ball. Juarez starting to fall behind a few more hitters. First pitch balls to four out of the last five. <laughs> Mosley struck out swinging in the first. And Rocha, the great pitching coach for Oklahoma. Third year for Patty Gasso. G. Juarez has actually been through an injury, had surgery on her bicep tendon. Was something that decided to have surgery in March of last year and got it actually the week before COVID shut everything down and had been rehabbing and rehabbing and rehabbing all through last year. Got a change up in the dirt. 
Mosley couldn't lay off it, Amanda, and there's another strikeout. Yeah, it's all about the location of this pitch, getting Mosley to chase that. As a pitcher, if you don't have to bring that pitch up, you don't. If you can get a hitter to swing at that pitch in the dirt, they're never going to hit it. They'll be out in front of it. Strikeout number seven. Jada Kearney takes a first pitch strike. But she told me, Kevin, that she didn't start really pitching full until December of last year. Didn't start throwing live against hitters until January because of that bicep tendon surgery. So it was a little bit slower for her to get going. And talked to her earlier this year before Bedlam. I said, how do you feel? She said, I'm all fixed now. And she felt like it had taken a little bit of time to get back to be herself. And maybe she's not going to be the same G. Juarez that we saw in 2019 against UCLA in the Champ Series. But she's figuring out still a way to win with what she's got and go out there and compete. Patty Gasso told us, I think G kept trying to be that 2019 pitcher much of this year. And he said she was chasing and expecting that, and we were expecting that a little bit, but end of the season, end of your career, time to change the narrative a little bit. Time to reinvent who you are. Reinvention on full display here in Oklahoma City, and helped out by her defense. Jenna Johns, get up and take it away. We've seen some hard hit balls in this game right at people. Janet Johns with the stretch. She timed it perfectly to go up and rob Georgia of a hit and a run. James Madison's magical run continues. Odyssey Alexander, one of the plays of the year, one of the plays of the World Series ever. That diving stop on a sacrifice bunt attempt in the seventh, and then Montana Fouts on her 21st birthday. 21 up, 21 down. First perfect game at the World Series in 21 years. One of the best day twos ever at the World Series. James Madison and Alabama are both a win away from the championship series and both get a well-deserved breather today. Top three in the fifth here for Oklahoma. 2-0 for T.R.A. Jennings against Mary Wilson Avon. We, when that play happened last night, the Odyssey Alexander play we, we saw, I mean, you said immediately on the air, I think that might be one of the best plays I've ever seen. As you've thought about it more, where does it stand in your mind? Still up there. That and the Jesse Warren play will just forever be imprinted in my mind in the same field. And again, the context, it was second and third, nobody out. Got it out, got it out at the plate. And then we had the perfect game by Montana. And we're showing you Courtney Blades Rogers for a reason. Courtney Blades Rogers, not just the mother of Georgia pitcher Burton Rogers, but she was the last pitcher to throw a perfect game at the World Series until Montana Fouts did so last night. And the very next game after Montana Fouts' perfect game, Courtney Blades Rogers is in the stands and could have a chance to watch her daughter pitch later. It's her daughter, Britton Rogers. Small, small world here in the softball community. <laughs> all the connections. <laughs> There's Jennings after a four-pitch walk. First of the game issued by Avent. Jocelyn Allo and Patty Gasso are going to have a chat. Patty Gasso is going to talk to the plate umpire, Liz Hammerschmidt. And Lou Harris Champer will use this time to visit the circle. So Patty's going to double back and talk to Jocelyn again. The National Player of the Year, Jocelyn Allo, who found out in an emotional fashion. This year's winner, 
of the 2021 USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year, the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> That's when Jocelyn found out on Tuesday night that she was the National Player of the Year. And we asked her what was going through her mind, and it was the sacrifice that her family made to get her to this point off the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Her dad, Levi, who said he would throw a 1,000 pitches a day to Jocelyn. This fly ball is going to stay in the park and right for Fields. I would recommend wholeheartedly, there's a piece Tim Keown wrote for ESPN.com a week ago about Jocelyn Allo. It's a piece that starts with the line, the ball dissolved like an aspirin into the sodium glow of the ballpark lights, and it gets more and more beautiful for there. The lifetime that Jocelyn Allo has spent preparing for this moment, her and her family, and there's gonna be a lot more Jocelyn Allo to come. This year, perhaps, and certainly next year, when she returns to Oklahoma for her fifth year, where she will chase Lauren Chamberlain's all-time home run record. Batter's Kinsey Hansen, number three hitter. Fly out to center, ground out to third today. You'll notice, Kevin, that Mary Wilson Avan is one of the few pitchers, or one of the pitchers who still brings the ball out of her glove and her windup. And oftentimes, pitchers like Kelly Maxwell comes to mind for Oklahoma State. She used to have a similar windup to Mary Wilson Avan. They decided to change it to keep the ball in her glove to be able to hide the grips. And when we asked Mary Wilson Avan about that, she said it's because I hold couple of my pitches the exact same way so that it's harder to pick up so yeah you can see my grip but it's because I own the change up similar as my drop ball and my curve ball similar as my rise ball this one muscled to center by Hanson and there is no doubt to the back of the bleachers in center Kenzie Hanson blasts off for number 22 and Oklahoma starting to pull away. Oklahoma has had success on this pitch that is up in the zone. Rise ball on a 2-1 count. Hansen is looking up. Keeps her hands above the ball, gets her barrel to it, and an absolute no-doubter and a hitter's count on the Kenzie Hansen who right away. One of the longest home runs we've seen this week here in Oklahoma City. RBIs 59 and 60 for Hansen. And then a, a long day like you could have today and tomorrow when you're playing elimination game after elimination game, when you have the type of offense that Oklahoma has, you've got to be thinking when you have five runs, we're going to push for the eight run mark so that we don't have to play seven innings and make our pitchers work any longer than what they have to do. 2-0 to Grace Lyons. Oklahoma needs three runs to get to that run rule mark. And the folks in town from Athens and the Georgia family members across the country starting to feel the pressure of this record-setting Oklahoma offense. We talked a lot about Georgia snapping the Oklahoma win streak because they're capable of it, but remember what Oklahoma did later that day was a doubleheader back on April the 20th, and they won 12 to three, run rule fashion in game two. Well, and it's not that Mary Wilson Avant shouldn't throw that rise ball anymore. Both home runs have been hit off of that same pitch. It's just gotta find a corner for it. 
when you throw against Oklahoma, you can throw that rise ball, but it has to be in maybe a little bit off the plate, trying to work it more on their hands instead of a rise ball that bleeds back over the middle of the plate. That's ball four to Lions. A walk, a fly out, a home run, and another walk here in the fifth. Just continuing to throw a lot of pitches. Oklahoma going deep into counts. 96 pitches for Mary Wilson Avon already. More than she threw in the first game against Oklahoma State. And there's nobody warming at this point in the Georgia bullpen. 34 wins out of their 50 have come via the run rule for Oklahoma, including a couple here in the NCAA tournament. Now 71 runs Oklahoma scored in the NCAA tournament. This is their seventh game. 19 home runs in those not yet seven full games. One of those scores was 24 to seven against Wichita State. Here's a bunt from Lindsey Elam. And the throw is dropped at first by Fincher. Lions goes to third, Elam to second. That's an error against Fincher. Looked like a pretty clean throw. And she could not hang on. Yeah, it looked like this is gonna be an easy out for Mary Wilson Avan. And then the throw ends up hitting Elam in the back. That's what it looked like to me. See how she's running so far in the baseline? We're looking she at should, potential. Looks like she should be out. Runner right? interference, she should be out. I'm not live, am I? All right, the umpires are going to come together. Let's bring in our rules expert, Christy Cornwell, here. Christy, what are you seeing? What are the umpires discussing? Well, they are talking about potential interference by the batter runner for being outside the running lane. They're trying to decide whether she was within the last stride to come out of the running lane and get back to the base. Okay, Christy, can you define what is the running lane we're looking at here? The running lane is that area in foul territory where the second line is, about 15 feet from the plate. The runner has to be within that line to get to first base. You can see right here she runs outside the line. That's not legal if she gets hit with the ball outside of that line. So right there she's got hit on the shoulder, so they were discussing her positioning. And it looks like, based on the reaction of the Georgia fans, Christy, that the umpires have reversed this call and Elam is out. And Christy, what will happen to the runner that's already on base? Uh, the runner goes back to first base, I think. Let me check that. Where she started. Yeah, that's good for graphics. That's page 110, rule 12, 5 5. Christy, do you know off the top of your head it was. 110, 12, 5, 5 on that rule? Uh, no, sir, I have a cheat sheet. I prepared for my assignment for today. I'm a good little student. Oh, gosh, Christy, it's great to have you with us. Three-time hey, World be Series here. umpire, Christy Cornwell. So you saw the rule there. The umpire is just going to clean this up. Lions was at first base when the play happened, and Lions going to go back to first base. Elam running in fair territory on the infield dirt, and she'll be out. Well, in... What's so odd to me is that Elam was running where she needed to be run, right here. And then as soon as Avant gets the ball, look at how she starts to run toward Fincher and more inside the base path. Just don't know if that's what she intended to do, but it's very clear that that's what happened. So interference, the scoring on that play will go 1-3. Pitcher to first, no error. Lions returns to first, and now Jada Coleman. And Georgia can certainly breathe a little bit easier because second and third one out. Then you're thinking about that eight-run rule coming into play mighty quick. Jada Coleman one for two, scored a couple of runs. Coleman reached base on the fielder's choice in the fourth and came around to score on a single plus E7.
That's in the dirt. Lions take second. for Jada. That is a stolen base for Lions. Her sixth and as many tries. Oklahoma 61 of 69 as a base stealing team. Harris Champer trying to fire up her pitcher. Big one coming to Coleman. And a 3-1 hits softly to shortstop. Got to hurry against Jada and she's out. Armistead just nicked her. And the fifth inning ends with a couple more runs across for Oklahoma. Well, Patty Gasso wanted her team to swing more free. Kinsley Hansen on a hitter's count, a two-run bomb. Emotional reteases here on Elimination Saturday. Kenzie Hansen, two run homers, made it 5 nothing Oklahoma. Winner of this game will face UCLA tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Every game today here on ESPN. Arizona, Florida State coming up next. That game scheduled for, as these things are always scheduled for, 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 local. Who knows if we'll end up starting at that time. Depends on how the last few innings of this game go. Last game tonight, Oklahoma State against the winner of that game, Arizona or Florida State, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 local. Day off for James Madison, first unseeded team ever to make it to Sunday since seeding began in 2005 in such a fashion. And a day off for Alabama, number three seed, which certainly looks like the team to beat right now. Strike one for Sydney Chambly, 2-1 from G. Juarez. G. Juarez, a pitcher who's going to rely more on her spin than over overpowering with speed. Not going to hit 70, 71 miles an hour like we've seen out of Garcia and Fouts and her teammates sail, but comfortable using that spin to create that movement. Some good swings and misses in this game today. She's looked sharp and... Been able to work on the edges too and these strikeout pitches that she's had. Not missing a lot over the middle of the plate. And we saw earlier in the game her strikeout to walk numbers. Second in Oklahoma history and opponent average. Third in strikeouts per seven. But if you look at her career numbers, the one thing that stands out, particularly this year, 18 home runs allowed. 96 and two thirds coming into the game. That is her first walk. It comes to Chambly leading off the home fifth. But the ball has stayed in the yard against Juarez. Just a single and a double allowed. Both to Lacey Fincher. And now after the walk to Chambly, Jaden Fields. Fields into center field. Long run for Jada Coleman. Not going to get there. Throw not in time to second. And Georgia has two runners on for the first time today. This is not easy base running for a runner at first base. And the type of fly ball that's hit out to center field. Look at Chambly, the runner at first base. She finds the ball, opens up, gets as far as she possibly can. And then she realizes that ball is going to be able to fall in front of Jada Coleman. And Justin Fields loving that his baby sister got a hit. What a tournament run it's been for Jaden. Seven for 11 now. Bottom of the order, Bordeaux takes aim and swings through 67 from Juarez. You mentioned the amount of home runs that G. Juarez has given up this year. 18 home runs and under 100 innings pitch, and George is the type of team that can hit the long ball. 
can get back into a game fast. Two strikes on Bordeaux. Only four home runs on the year, but did hit a long one against Florida in the clinching game two of the Super Regionals. Bulldogs have hit 83 as a team. That's elevated foul. So with two strikes, she wouldn't think would be very frequent. Georgia hits about a third of its home runs. Two strikes here. And there's number three. Eighth strikeout for G. Had a feeling that that off speed was coming with the way that Bordeaux was fouling off a pitch before that. Doesn't throw it in the dirt, throws it more inside. It breaks in and up a little bit. She swings underneath it. What is that? Is that an off-speed curve? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, she can locate. <laughs> What's been interesting is that she's located that pitch in, in different spots. She's been able to throw it inside to right-handed hitters. She's been able to get them to chase it down in the dirt. And she's had 20 swings and misses so far in this game. And the most strikeouts in a game since she last faced Georgia a month and a half ago. And she does throw some pitches, and I'm thinking of Brooke Giannis, who we saw at the Oregon a couple of weeks ago, that are not always obvious out of the hand. Is it a curve? Is it a rise? Is it off speed? The way she manipulates the ball, it's so fun to watch her move around the zone. <laughs> Those lefties will get you. Kelly Maxwell did the same thing yesterday when she came in, too. That's a line drive that sneaks over the glove of Johns. The shortstop, Lyons, makes the play at second. Fields had to hold up, seeing if the ball would be caught. And the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year gets the assist from short. Just good communication and awareness of Grace Lyons to see Sydney Chambly right in front of her. She knew that she wasn't going to make the force at third, but Jennings yelling 2-2-2 two, 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 and stretches out the freshman. Covering second base, good communication to Lions to be able to get an important out. Has started every game at shortstop in her three years at Oklahoma, Grace Lions. All 54 this season for Lions. All 141 of her Oklahoma career. Savannah Sykes, the Georgia leadoff batter. Bulldogs trying to break through in the fifth. And Sykes swings and misses. You can tell, Kevin, that Oklahoma is really starting to settle in here. I think they've gotten more and more comfortable as this game has gone on at the plate on defense. And G. War is leading them in the circle. The ninth start of her World Series career. Her 22nd swing and miss induced. And Juarez is a strike away from five scoreless innings. That one is off the glove of Elam, and she might have been helped out there by Liz Haberschmidt, the plate umpire. Ball didn't get too far away. Armistead does scoot to second. Wild pitch has put a second runner in scoring position. And they're going to stay right there. First two runners reach. No big thing for G. Juarez, who looks like the G. Juarez of old. Five nothing suitors in game one of elimination Saturday.
second inning tone setter for Mackenzie Donahue in Oklahoma. A couple of two run homers for the Sooners. Trying to stave their way back, stave off elimination on this elimination Saturday, win what would be the first of two games to get to Sunday. A 5 0 lead heading into the sixth against a new pitcher, Britton Rogers who takes the ball from Mary Wilson Avent. Yeah, Britton Rogers, just a freshman. The coaching staff loved the way that she threw against Duke in the regional, said that she looked poised. A lot of confidence coming or into her coming into this weekend. Mary Wilson Avance thrown the majority of the innings for Georgia. 39 out of 45 in the postseason. And she's taken out after five, maybe the final time in her career. Ken re enters the starting pitcher. Georgia could rally to win the game, but it is possible that we've seen the last of Mary Wilson Avant in her five years at the University of Georgia. Through in every game for the Bulldogs in this tournament. They run from unseeded to the World Series. That's a cracking single from Donahue, who is three for three after not starting on Thursday. She's just been a spark for them today. Out in front of this changeup, you can see how her weight shifted forward, but she's still able to keep her hands back enough to find a hole. Oklahoma makes it to game two. Got a feeling we're going to see Mackenzie Donahue in left field again. <laughs> yes, sir. Janet Johns ground ball hit by a pitch. Johns pops it up, and the third baseman Sykes makes the play. When you think of how great of an experience that this is for Britton Rogers, who's just a freshman, this Georgia team is very talented. They're very young. They're going to be good for in years to come, especially with recruits that they have coming in and what they're going to be able to build upon this year with their offense. So, sure, give Britton Rogers an opportunity to throw at the Women's College World Series if she's going to be your future pitcher. A lot of young talent on this Georgia team. They're going to have to replace Avan. Obviously, that's a huge huge loss next season but this is maybe a year ahead of schedule on the whole for georgia you look at how many freshmen they play four in the starting nine three sophomore starters two juniors so potentially the whole offense or all the major contributors could return for lou next year I mentioned earlier Britton rogers is the daughter of softball royalty courtney blades rogers Second in Division I history in wins. Pitched for Lou Harris Champer at Nichols and Southern Miss. Only behind the great Monica Abbott of Tennessee. You know how many games Courtney won in her career? Um, this is not a rhetorical question. What's your guess? 120. 151. I can tell you said that. <laughs> All-time single season wins leader 2 2000 for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles went 52 and 7. Wow. <laughs> Insane. 52 and 7. Led that team to the World Series in 2000. Well. Here's why we were talking about Courtney earlier and last night. She threw the fourth perfect game in World Series history. And Montana Fouts perfecto last night. The first in 21 years since Courtney did it. Debbie Doom was also on that list for UCLA, who, I mean, just has one of the greatest pitcher names of all time. What a cool name. That's pretty good. <laughs> Blades is a good one for a pitcher, though. Yeah. 
blade slices through the Arizona offense. That was a one nothing win, by the way, for Southern Miss over Arizona 21 years ago. And Southern Miss upset the number two seed in the tournament. So Southern Miss, a school that was doing some James Madison type things 21 years ago. And you know that Courtney has to be more nervous now watching her daughter pitch than when she was actually on the field doing it. No doubt about it. <laughs> Britain's 3-2 blasted by Mendes. This will hit the wall on a hop. Donahue's going to take third. Mendes into second. A ringing double for Nicole Mendes, the 50-year senior. Britton Rogers is throwing a lot of change-ups, and she's not really fooling these Oklahoma hitters. That's exactly what Mendez gets. Look at how it's up in the zone, and she's just able to get behind it and barrel it up. Now, Oklahoma in business here. Two runners in scoring position, less than two outs. Again, trying to shoot for that, those eight runs to get a run roll win. This is a potential eighth run at the plate, and Tiara Jennings who is still three RBIs off the all-time single-season freshman record. Hit a three-run home run yesterday. Will still need a bottom of the sixth. Georgia has to have as many trips to the plate as Oklahoma, so game would not end here at the top of the sixth, but you'd be in position to at least save one inning if the Sooners can grab three runs here in the sixth. Every inning, every pitch matters that you're saving. Whenever you lose your first game and you're trying to make a run. Jennings one for two with a walk today. And takes one well in the dirt for ball three. You could pitch around T.R.A. Jennings to load the bases, set up a force on most teams in the country. You can't really do it here because the National Player of the Year is waiting in the wings. There she is, number 78 on deck. Three and one. On a hop to second base, Kuma trying to find it, and the throw deemed to be in time to first. Close play. Jennings is out. Donahue is in, and it's six nothing. Oklahoma really has hit the ball hard in this game. Their outs have been hard ground balls, hard line drives, deep fly balls. About as close as it gets right there, Kev. Got to have possession of the ball in the glove. And I don't know. Need to see that one slow down a whole lot to be sure. But <laughs> it's 6 nothing certainly. And Otto will try to add more. 0 for 3 today. Oh. Jocelyn Otto has reached base in every game this year except one which is probably not the one you would think of. April 10th at Louisiana Tech. On base in 23 straight. 52 of 53 overall. And that is a fly ball belted foul. Ask Patty Gasso about Allo's big monster year this year. So, you know, what do you attribute it to or just taking it to the next level? She said she's realized she's wasted time. Freshman year, nobody knew who she was. Her sophomore year, she felt the pressure of having to have that, those monster numbers that she put up in her freshman year, and she put pressure on herself, wasn't having fun playing the game, even didn't travel her for a Big 12 series against Kansas to just well, let her have a break. Patty's talked about that moment a lot, that moment when she told Jocelyn, we're not bringing you, you need a break. 
Felt like after hitting 30 home runs as a freshman, Alo came back the next year at the attitude, I've got to hit 40. And the more she tried, the worse it got. Oh my goodness gracious. Alo to the back of the bleachers. There's the Oklahoma record. Number 31. She is all by her lonesome. The new single season home run queen in Oklahoma history. It's a change up right over the heart of the play and she's not fooled at all. And even though this went about midway up the bleachers, she has the type of power to hit it over the bleachers. And at first I thought that it was going to be there. And then she points to the alumni and the fans. The legacy of support continues with this program. Lauren Chamberlain hit 30 in 2012. Then she did it again in 2013. Joss tied it in 2018. And now, Joss Lanalo stands alone. That is the 85th home run of her career. And that puts her just 10 shy of Lauren Chamberlain's all-time record. And Joss Lanalo has said she will be coming back next year. And that record may look well out of reach by the time she's through. Kinsey Hansen to third. The third two-run home run of the game for Oklahoma. Donahue in the second, Hansen in the fifth. And the nation's best and biggest bat, Jocelyn Otto, number 31 here in the sixth. You can tell that Oklahoma is starting to heat up at the plate. Three home runs in this game, and the National Player of the Year finally gets in on the action. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Out in right field, Lyle, Bro, JDH. Welcome back, Oklahoma. Definitely three long balls in this one. The power of Oklahoma is definitely back. And you gotta love to see some of the strong as Jocelyn Allo sit on the changeup, baby, and take it yard. Man, Kevin, Amanda, Allo, goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney, Larry, Bill, Hello, and Aloha both mean goodbye these days. Somewhere up in the bleachers at Jocelyn Otto, home run ball sits, and Oklahoma sits three outs away from a run rule victory. And with three more outs, just cancel all your plans besides maybe delivery or cook an early dinner because it's going to be Oklahoma UCLA on elimination Saturday. Wow. That's popped up. That's coming right back to our booth and just a little bit under on the net. <laughs> one and one to Sydney Kuma. Two, three, four for Georgia, which needs a run to extend this game to the seventh. Eight run rule still in effect here at the World Series. Kuma has struck out twice against G. Juarez. You know, Kevin, I, I still feel like the turning point in this game is Donahue's home run. Two strikes, two outs. Oklahoma just wasn't really looking good at the plate. They had struck out a couple of times in that inning. Looked like it was going to be a three-up, three-down inning. Coleman gets on. Donahue hits a two-run home run. And to me, that just loosened up everybody. The fans, the coaching staff, the entire team, G. Juarez, too. First of a career-high three hits today for Mackenzie Donahue. And not only was that a two-strike hit, Coleman's hit was on an 0-2 count. So a couple of pitcher-friendly counts. And the Sooners solved Avant in that second inning, jumped in front, and they've led the whole way. 
3-2 to Kuma. Down she goes. There's number 10 for G. Juarez. You said in the third inning it was looking like a double-digit strikeout kind of game, and she got there. <laughs> yeah, it's been impressive, too, the way that she's been able to face these hitters three different times and still get them to strike out. That's a hat trick there for Sydney Kuma. Three strikeouts and a curveball. Hey, here comes Patty. Third trip to the World Series for G. Juarez. Record of just two and five coming into the game. Looks like that's going to bump up. But Patty Ganso will get the Cole Mayo World Series experience here. And let G. Juarez listen to the crowd. Our Capital One rewarding performance. G. Juarez rewarding her head coach's fate. Ten strikeouts and a scoreless five and a third. Using all her different strikeout pitches, her wise ball, a curveball on both sides of the plate, her changeup, gets the curtain call, comes out. Here's a little wave to the fans. A brilliant, brilliant morning and afternoon for Juarez and Nicole May comes on with Oklahoma two outs away from a run rule win. And Nicole May, I love the fact that she's entering this game. A freshman has had a terrific year. They've used her in a lot of different roles. They've started her. They've brought her in relief. They've used her as a closer. But she's never pitched on this field before and they're going to need her if they want to be able to make a run in the champ series to the champ series through it and i love the fact that they're getting sir, some experience with an 8-0 lead one out two outs away from winning a game it's lacy fincher who's two for two today rest of the georgia team has just one hit Fincher two for two, everybody else one for 17. And a swinging strike induced by May, who goes off speed. And it's such a luxury, Kevin, that they're able to bring her in with an eight-run lead and feel, get her comfortable. Because think about where when Kelly Maxwell entered the game for Oklahoma State. May. Looking like a right-handed G. Juarez as she strikes out Fincher to begin her outing. Goes with her changeup in the dirt. This location and this speed has been working against Georgia all game long. Sarah Mosley. Strike one. Thirty minutes in between games, Arizona, Florida State, as Mary Wilson Avant looks on. The fifth year senior whose career looks like it's about to come to an end of the World Series. What a run it has been for Georgia. From 11th in the SEC to the World Series. And that run will end on Elimination Saturday. The Oklahoma Sooners run roll the Georgia Bulldogs. And it is one down, one to go for OU, which has just set up a Saturday primetime date with second seeded UCLA. G. Juarez, brilliant. Jocelyn Allo, explosive. Her 31st home run to stand alone atop the Oklahoma single season leaderboard. And the Sooners are going to need to do a lot more of this as they may well see the two-time National Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia, for a third straight night for UCLA at 7 Eastern, 6 Central tonight. Well, G. Juarez gave them exactly the start that they needed. She was comfortable in the circle right away. She gave their offense time to get more and more comfortable as the game went on to where they are feeling good now and comfortable playing here on this field. 
Just amazing that we're going to get Oklahoma UCLA on Saturday night. But before that, Arizona and Florida State are going to try to advance to a meeting with Oklahoma State. Mike Candrea and the Wildcats against Lonnie Alameda's Seminoles. This is the one that broke the record. Number 31 for Joss Lovato back in the sixth inning. She breaks the record that she had shared with Lauren Chamberlain, the 85th of her career, and the home run queen is with Jalen. Jocelyn, you are now the home run queen of Oklahoma single season record. What did you see on that pitch? How'd you feel? Um, I knew she was going to come with the changeup, so it was just a matter of me um, staying within myself and really just breathing through my bat and just trusting my timing. And the other day when you guys played JMU, bats seemed a little bit unsure. What was the difference in your offense today? Um, we really locked in today on what our plan was, and we executed what we needed to do, and uh, showing today <laughs> and I know this is such a great moment for you to be able to rec to be able to celebrate Polynesian players and being from Hawaii what does it mean for the little girls that are looking up to you right now oh it means the world um, just to see Polly's on this stage not only me but Deja on Arizona and I'm sure a bunch more here um, just to know that you can do it and uh, if you believe in yourself that you'll be here soon Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Congratulations. Thank you. Shout out to Hawaii. Love you guys. The Hawaii kid, Jocelyn Otto, our Capital One player of the game. 31st home run of her season. And Oklahoma's season is not done. Donahue had the first long ball. Coleman a dash around the bases. Hanson homered. And then Otto, the finishing blow. Congratulations to Georgia. What a great late season surge for the Bulldogs. But Oklahoma's moving on. Arizona, Florida State, 248 Eastern, 148 local. Coming up next, game two of four on this elimination Saturday.